<clears throat> dot plots. Let's start there. Dot plots hopefully are not new to you. You've seen them before. Dot plots are a statistical chart. So it's a way to display data. It's a statistical chart showing numbers, right? It consists of, so it's consisting, I spelled that wrong. I've been having a bad spelling day today. Consisting. of data but it's not just data it's data dots like we're going to show it by dots now some point some people so data points is a more mathematical statistical way of saying it sometimes dot plots instead of dot plots they're called frequency tables and they have x's instead of a dot or elementary school they were more pictographs so like it was about shirt colors and they'd have t-shirts listed next to it right so same idea we're just streamlining it a little bit more so it's a statistical chart consisting of data points on a number line because we're tending to get away from it's frozen we're tending to move away from qualitative data these and we're moving towards only quantitative data numbers right so it's going to be on a number line so instead of this being about favorite t-shirt color we are dealing with quantitative data we're dealing with numerical data so i'm going to give you some data and we're going to create a dot plot the data is five, six, five, eight, ten, eleven, fifteen, nine, eleven, nine, six, twelve, eleven. Again, the data, if you want to check that you have it all written down, 5, 6, 5, 8, 10, 11, 15, 9, 11, 9, 6, 12, 11. Now, there are a few things that you need to know about a dot plot. The first thing that you need to remember that you need to keep in mind is that the number line must be even. The number line must be even. When you create your number line, you need to attend to precision. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to be absolutely perfect, but it needs to be a good quality number line. This is what I'm talking about. If I'm going to make a number line, one to five, some people's number lines look like this. <laughs> Sometimes people's number lines look like this. Sometimes people's number lines look like this. See what I'm talking about? I'm not saying you have to get out a ruler and perfectly measure it, but you should be using a pencil so that if your number line doesn't work out the first time you make it, you can erase it and fix it. All right, so we're gonna skip one, two, three lines and draw our number line. Now this being our number line, 
I'm going to have to decide how I'm going to number my number line. What's my minimum value? Five. What's my maximum value? Fifteen. Please, in order to be a little more statistically accurate, do not start at five and end at fifteen. Give it a little bit of room on each side. Okay? It doesn't have to be zero to thirty. But give it a little bit of room, something that makes sense to you. Like, because I'm doing 5 to 15, I'm going to try to do 1 to 20. If I start at 1 and I can only get to 18, that's okay because it goes past my maximum. All right, you don't have to do negative 30 to positive 172. Just a little bit below the minimum and a little bit above the minimum. If you wanted to do 2 to 17, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to, it's a little terrifying doing this in pen, I'm not going to lie. But I'm just attending to precision, I'm taking my time, the struggle is real for some of you, I get it. Like my number line got to 16, that's okay, because I'm above my maximum. If I would have only been able to get to 14, I would have needed to erase it or white it out and try again a little bit smaller this time. So creating a dot plot, I'm going to put this data on this number line. And my method is going to be by putting a dot for each piece of data. So my first piece of data is five. So at five, I'm going to put a dot. My next piece of data is a six. So above six, I'm going to put, should my second dot look like this? What's wrong with that? The dots should be the same size. So that's our second piece of information. The dots should be the same size, and I'm even gonna put height. Because if you put your dot for six, you know, up here, that's a misleading graph. We want our graph to be as uniform as possible. So they should, I get it, It's you're not a machine, but you need to try your best to make it look like it is uniform. All right, so my first was five, then six, now back to five. So I'm going to stack them. Eight, 10, 11, 15, nine, 11, nine, six, 12, 11. Have you seen a dot plot before? Yes. Typically, from here on out, they will be dots instead of X's. Another thing would be like a frequency table where you put tallies. We'll be using frequency tables later on. Another really common way of showing data is something called a stem and leaf plot. in my opinion, the most underrated of all of the graphs. I really enjoy stem and leaf plots. <laughs> I think they show data really well. No, that's next. That's a box plot. Hence the name, box plot. A stem and leaf plot is a chart that organizes Oops, organizes, plural, not past tense. Data by place value. Stem and leaf plots, I think, are really valid to like show grade distributions because you can organize it by the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, right? You can organize it by place value. So 
the place value part is key. So you have to look for the largest place value. And the largest place value in our data is the what? The teens, correct? Which is the tens place value. So tens is my largest place value. Oh, I'm going to have to do some squeezing. And so if tens is my largest place value, what comes after the tens place? The ones place. And then we just start talking about our data. And my data is 5, 5, 6, 6, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, 11, 11, 12, 15, correct? So I'm going to start with 5. What's in the tens place for the value 5? Zero. And what's in the ones place? Five. Then I have another five, which has a zero tens place and a five in the ones. I have six, which is a zero tens place and six. Oh no. Six again. Eight. nine and nine All right so there are my tens my zero value tens my data is five five six six eight nine nine five five six six eight nine nine five, five, eight, right <laughs> tens for the one value in the tens i have the number 10 so my tens place is a one my zeros is a or my ones place is a zero. I've done that twice today. What? How am I going to make 11 look? One in the tens place, a one in the ones. Another 11. So one in the tens place, one in the ones. Another 11. One in the tens place, one in the ones. 12. What does that look like? One in the tens and a two in the ones. And last is 15, so 1 and 5. Have you ever seen a stem and leaf plot? If I wanted to, hint, hint, on your homework, ask you to make a back-to-back -back stem and leaf. So let's pretend this data, this data right here is about a number of dollars students have in their wallet. And then I collected another set of data about the number of dollars teachers had. I would then, this is my students, and then I would then make another one going the other way for teachers. So you can do back to back so you can compare them side to side. You know, if you can't remember what a back to back stem and leaf plot is, you could always Google it. Less work than what I would have had to do in middle school if I didn't remember something, because I'm old. Box plot, what Cleo was asking about. Box plot. Box plots are made up of boxes. boxes. It's also called a box and whiskers. Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, yeah. But we've taken the ridiculousness out of that because math teachers or math people are not creative. Box and whiskers is way too creative for us. It's just a box plot. And a box plot or a box and whiskers graph is a way of displaying data using a five number summary. It's a way of displaying data using a five number summary. Now this part's going to blow your mind because there are five data values that we want, right? Five data, five number summary, five pieces of data. Each section represents 25% of the data. So if each section represents 25% of the data, how many sections are there? Isaiah? Four. There are four sections, but we're using a five number summary. Do not let that confuse you. There are four pieces, so that means there's 25% in each section. 
but you have to have a five number summary to create those four sections. Because if you look at your hand, right, the sections are the pieces in between it. So I have five pieces of data, but how many sections are there? Four. Okay, you cannot get confused between the five and the four. There's five number summary to create four sections. What is a five number summary? What are the five pieces of data? What's one of them, Jackson? The median. The median. So if I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five pieces of data, five number summary, where would the median go? What number place? Is it the first piece, the second piece, the third piece, the fourth piece, or the fifth piece? Why the third? Because that's in the middle. And by the median, by definition, is in the middle. Who else had their hand up? What's another piece? Alexis? Minimum. The minimum. What piece of data is that? One. One. What's another piece, Kalia? The lower quartile, what is that one? One or two, three, four or five? I'm just gonna put LQ to save some time. Atticus, what? Um, the upper quartile. Which one is that, four or five? Four. And what's the last piece of data? Thank you, Bradley, maximum. In order to find these pieces of data, what should we do to our data before we start? Okay. Put it in order. Organize it, right? I'm going to organize it straight from this dot plot or from the stem and leaf. Because it's already in order, just it's not in list form. So here we go. My data is 5, 5, 6, 6, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, 11, 11, 12, 15. All right, let's fill in this chart. What's the minimum? Five. Five. What's the maximum? Those are my favorite ones to find because they're easy, right? Median, cross them out. I'm going to cross out three at a time. One, two, three. One, two, three. Think I can do three again or should I cut it down? One, two, three. One, two, three. Ooh, just barely. What's the median? Nine. How do you find the lower quartile? The median below the median, right? So do I include this nine that I circled? No, because it is the median. If there were two values in the middle, if, it, if ten, nine and 10 were in the middle, would I include the nine when I'm finding the lower quartile? No. Yes. Yes, because nine and 10 are not the median. The median would be in between them, so I would include counting the nine. But since this nine is the actual median, I do not include it. One, two, up, down, top, bottom. I've got two sixes in the middle, so what's the median? Six. Six. Upper quartile. One, two, three, four. I have two eleven, so what's the median? Eleven. eleven. All right. I'm going to have to turn this to make my number line. Uh, let's see. I think I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That was close. Anybody remember how to make a box plot? Box and whiskers? It involves dots and lines. Dots and lines. Caleb E, what do you do? Uh huh.
Okay. I'm going to change it. I'm going to say you put a line above it. Okay. All right. Find your lower quartile and put a line above it. Perfect. So lower quartile, median, and upper quartile get lines. So I have a line at 6, I have a line at 9, and I have a line at 11. Then I'm going to put dots at my minimum and at my maximum. So a dot goes at 5 and at 15. And then I connect them to make my box. And I draw lines. This is why it was called a box and whiskers. Because there's a box and then whiskers coming out of it. But like whiskers are like usually in sets of three. So, Ladies and gentlemen, this piece right here, I'm going to color it green. From five to six, what percent does that represent? 25. Does it look like it represents 25? No, but if I go down here to my data, look. About one-fourth or 25% of my data is between five and six. Even though it doesn't look like it on my graph, that is 25% of the data. From six to nine... That represents how much? 25%. And if I look at my data, maybe that picture, that maybe that's 25%. I could maybe go for that. That looks okay. Because look, 25%, oops, I did too much. 25% of my data is between six and nine. How much is this piece? 25%. Are all of these 25%? Are they all, do they all look even? But are they statistically even? Yes. They are statistically even. Each one represents 25% of the data. So let's talk a little bit about this. What percent of students had more than nine dollars in their pocket what percent of students had nine or more dollars in their pocket what percent Ian 50 percent because this and this together make 50 percent correct mm -hmm. what percent of students had less than eleven dollars what percent of students had less than eleven Julia 75% because it's 25%, 25%, and 25%. Even though looking at this graph, that looks like it's probably only half of it. But it's not because each section is 25% of the data. What is the inner quartile range? The inner quartile range. The I, Q, R. Tell me what is it? Five. How'd you get five? The upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Perfect. 11 minus 6 is 5. 